finds a life within the roster. It's just with a two days off, have they really been able to nail out what they need to to win these uh, to win these games? Like, have they been able to really prepare onto these maps? I mean, I'd hope so because even in the days they're playing, they're playing one best of three, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. Now, obviously, there's lots of different tournaments they could be playing alongside it, and it might be hard to find scrims with the other teams waiting for their games and obviously not wanting to give away their hands, but. Still, uh, hopefully they've gone through their VODs, they've looked through their reviews. I mean, Lucid Dream, uh, as we're saying, you know, they've already played Mirage a little bit. The Divine Vendetta game was it was okay. Uh, not the kind of thing I would transfer over to say they can do the damage against Beyond. Oh, excuse me, against Beyond, but they did beat D13-16-6. Uh, if they can do that, they can beat Beyond. I just don't think they will. We're starting out on the T side here for Lucid Dream. They got a little bit of utility on Leaf. And they're looking for underpass control right off the bat. Sitting outside the B apartments, giving up control of ramp, and this is almost certain to be a B hit. I mean, Olivia already grabbing some of the information as he peeks in towards the top of him. He's still going to hang around here as well. I mean, the B site, like, my rolls is just the only one there. They're going to go for the smokes. The flash is in. He needs the rotations to help him out. It's going to be Olivia there to support him. And my rolls just can't quite connect any of the shots, though. He does have the protection from the smoke towards his other hand side. And Olivia will come through. My rolls finally connects the shot. They get two kills. Olivia even gets a second. And this push has been shut down. John Olsen left alone in a one on four. He's got the bomb, yes, but a chance to plant it? I'd say no. Yeah, he's got to find the kills if he wants to get that plant down. And they're just pushing him together as a unit beyond take it one to zero. Starting it out in a pretty convincing manner. And I guess when we look at Lucid Dream, we can say at PTC, he's played pretty well in most of their games. John Olsen's been there from time to time, but generally he's uh, he hasn't hit the form of the previous event over in the road to Rio. I mean, if we were to say this, like John Olsen, I, I think his skill potential is easily on par with any member that you pick out from beyond but it's about hitting that level and mm -hmm. i don't think there's sure. a team around him to help assist that right i think there's a big problem of you know selfishness within the team you know not flashing each other in we see that happen all the time for beyond olivia even on the awp is willing to do it mm -hmm. so it's really hard to excel uh, against a team like beyond who who plays around each other and it's hard for you to excel as an individual player when you don't have that support system Oh, 100%. You're coming into a region where, for the most part, it's played as individuals playing Counter-Strike and not a team. When you hit that next level, when you step it up to team play, to playing as a unit, well then, uh, yeah, you're going to dominate a lot of these teams that otherwise it would be a, a scrappy head-to-head -head duel and you never know who's going to win in the firepower department. But when you add tactics alongside the, the ability to shoot some heads, well, things get a little bit dangerous for your opponents. You can see Lucid Dream come into this round with a much better buy, Jason. They got full AKs. Their opponents have got SMG, so this is very much a bonus round for Beyond. And if they win this, well, just like the name suggests, they get a big bonus. KNTZ able to find the opening a second as well. Even going so far as to find a third with a FAMAS. We were kind of just talking wow. about using utility to get his sights to help assist kills, and there was not a single piece thrown in that round, I believe. Mm-hmm. And KNTZ didn't once see a second teammate, not before he'd reset his spray and was ready to shoot again. So the spacing's a little bit off. I will say on the third kill, he had support from, I think it was Stairs. So the player that would have swung, I think at that point they had good spacing. They'd already lost two players, and then they got picked off by two separate duels um, as they came out. The player on Stairs peaked just in time. There's so, Olivia opening this. I mean, this should be clean. Clean as can be up against Eagles. So if Mitch, the third round is called the bonus round. And if you win that, what's the fourth round called? Another bonus? Super round? happy fun time. No, this is Super this, this is like the, the money maker, right? Because you're up against players that don't have any armor and you've still got those SMGs saved over. Not taking a loss as well. I mean your, your cash should be stacked pretty damn high. They've gone for an op in this round, which is something I don't fully agree with. I think you should probably just try to farm a little bit of extra cash. Uh, if you're an offer, take a pistol. Because let's say they rush B, right? Let's say they kill the two players on B. Now you got to retake with an off. If you lose that, so you're probably not going to retake. Probably going to concede the round. And if you do, you risk them getting a free op. So most teams in Europe anyways will decide to go in for like, if that player dies, he'll take a P250 or a Deagle or something. And if he doesn't, he'll just keep the SMG and farm a little bit of extra cash. Because you know they haven't got a bomb plan, so there's no way they have money. 
Oh, speaking of farming, I think we're seeing, you know, beyond, you know, load up farming simulator 2020. Probably coming on the Steam summer sale. <laughs> they, they're ready to go. I mean, STK, he, he's just waiting for them to come around the corner. Myrals already picking up one kill so far. I'm trying to barrel in on towards this beast side. I can kind of respect that, hoping for a peak. But with 20 seconds left, they're going to have to rush through. And, well, extra money in the pockets here for the CT side. I'd be on 4 0 start. Pretty, uh, pretty flawless so far. And again, we've only seen the one buy round out of Lucid Dream. We're going to see it finally come back to life here. Have the money for the yacht for PTC. He can buy it up himself. That is Beyond really going to keep these SMGs? Are they that confident? I mean, Myros is on 9k. STK is on 7.7. .7. You don't need to do this. So what is this round called? The last round was super happy fun times. <laughs> is this the Beyond special? Like, I, I don't know. I guess. Well, see, the thing is, I think they won the previous buy round so convincingly that they now just don't care. <laughs> They're like, oh, we'll take another bonus round. Let's get all the money. It's like they're playing for the jackpot. But Man, I, well, we're not in Vegas. Look, the mollies. The mollies are on the map. Well played. Oh, nice. Look at this. Check underpass. Boom. Molotovs all over. I love it. So we get to see all the utility usage now. Something that PGL were working on for us over the weekend. They're like, weekend? What's that? No, well, actually, <laughs> we're working on getting this going. I say weekend, Monday, Tuesday. Nice flash. They don't get the kill off the back of it. But, I mean, that, it was only an MP9 long-range duel. It gets them information, most importantly. Smoke over deep. They're going to push on through on another flashbang. Get that control. Have you noticed PTC, when he's aiming down the site, he likes to shake his mouse? I, I haven't. Yeah, so you'll see his crosshair. It's going to move the entire time he's aiming down sites. And I can kind of understand why. I remember playing, like, Cow League back in the day, and there was a, a guy on our team who used to do that. Because it keeps your hand, like, ready keeps it like good oh, to yeah. go and it doesn't let, let your mind just like fade away and relax same with your your hand your arm i kind of like it but obviously it could put your it could technically give you a disadvantage i don't know where your uh, mouse does go nice little peek through but pgc's not going to get the shot onto olivia and olivia won't characteristically missing some shots i would imagine not too many more than this or maybe more a commentator's curse comes through he can't hit a single op shot and you would imagine if he connects one two of those that would have been a shutdown push 100% he had the opportunities there to just destroy the short pushes that came through. Then the player up in apartments probably doesn't die quite as easily on the drop back. And well, that was just a disaster. It, it, it comes down to that sometimes, right? You can have a good strategy, you can have the stack, you can have whatever you want, but if you're not hitting your shots well, yeah. It's the most I mean, basic. FPS 101, exactly. Yeah. The most basic mechanic to the game. Is he trying to make it expensive though? I mean, they still have money, right? Not Myro's on 9k. But he should at least be good for one here. Let's go around the corner for the second, and well, he won't be able to get it. They're going to be able to back away. And now we go into Beyond's first real buy round <laughs> and straight into the double up setup. Yeah, well, that's, that's the benefit, right? That's what they've earned this whole time, picking up that. Uh... <laughs> series of bonus rounds just not investing keeping the smgs i respect them because now they get to really roll forward with what they want lucid dreams got the first round on the board it was on the back of a hail mary with olivia missing a lot of shots as they came up through short you could see the utility wasn't there nobody was blind nothing was smoked off for them to move on forward they allowed the awp to challenge them on range that's a critical mistake but olivia didn't yeah. hit a shot so yeah good point no smokes, no flashes. I mean, in their first gun round, they didn't smoke or flash A ramp either. Mm -hmm. They just kind of walked out and, and got picked off by K and TZ time and time again. And you can't rely on this, uh, that kind of strategy working again and again. I want to point out, Beyond have got a really weird hold this round. So SDK, I'm guessing, is an underpass, not up in ladder room. Okay. Like, look at B. They've allowed them to basically push all the way up B. Olivia, uh, sorry, May rolls is playing with the AWP in kitchen. This is the most passive B hold, considering they've only lost one round on that side. It's not like they're getting pushed A every single round or something. They only just lost the round on B, and now it's a super passive hold. That's going to help them out a lot. As Lucid Dream walk into the A site, there's basically four players here with a quick rotate from SDK. He can watch out window and allow Olivia to focus on connector. That's if QQ ever leaves, but... No Whoa! Okay, I don't know how he hit that, but fair enough. 
well, miss shots and beyond right now. And him a better, uh, better duo. He's in these last. Finally, he's going to connect this first kill with AWP in this game. Bomb's going to go down after plant situation. Now, they still have 789 tucked away really close towards connect. I don't know if SDK is going to expect him to be here. Even someone to support him. That's going to be Fox. Fox might be pushed out of position now. And 79 still going to be holding angle. Two players trying to come in from CT. SDK is going to win that battle. Now the CT players can start to push through. The two players out of loose are going to be backing in towards the A ramp. PTC with AWP is able to connect the shot into my rolls. He gets a second to KNTZ and they will close that round out. And even though we had the super happy fun times coming for Beyond, they don't have any money left after losing two. Oh, I mean, that's the downside of the double op setup, right? You really have to win those rounds when you pull it out in round number six. But unfortunately, both ops getting picked off in those early engagements. The site falls, and we mentioned that Beyond had the passive B hold for the early rotates to the A site. They had lots of control. They had the information once those smokes started to come over, and yet nothing to follow up on. Really, if the player that went down in connector, the QQ, if he actually found that kill, I think we could have been looking at a much, much better hold from beyond. But as soon as connectors open and they're able to split through to you, the player that's in jungle can't really assist on the side anymore because he has to focus on that closer push. SDK then is essentially useless because he was up in ladder room watching window. But I mean, that's what Olivia's doing now, more or less. And so you got one player isolated on the site. I think uh, I think we should be a little bit fair to QQ. I mean, I mean, I completely agree. You should have had that kill, but I really wonder what that flick was like out of oh, seven, yeah. eight, nine. Like he wasn't even looking Wild. near him, and then straight to the dome. The but you're completely senses. right. Exactly. If he falls, that should be a solid defense. No pressure coming through KNTZ. Well, they he go for the boost up, but he's been forced back by the flashbang. Seven, eight, nine again opens up on a QQ. The push is coming straight towards me. The odds waiting. The odd gets nothing. ATC gets one, he gets a second STK as well, and look at this! With the minimal buy-up, they're gonna close this round out with, the, with three players left alive. All and right. they get a double op. Well, now we know Beyond just needed buy SMGs. Yeah, don't, why do you have don't rifles? Bother. Uh, double op setup, you've lost the round, guaranteed. This is... <laughs> is, this, is this week two's conundrum? You know, it was like <laughs> two deagles and you win rounds, two ops and you lose rounds now? Yeah, this is it, we figured it out. No, but in all seriousness, that was just really, really well played by the likes of KNTZ. Lucid Dream, though, going to reset, and their economy is going to do the same. PTC with the AWP, everyone else on pistols. Very spread out at the start. I want to keep an eye on See? PTC, See? though. He's gone. His crosshair. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Wiggling. Yeah. Just wanted to point it out because he haven't seen it yet. Hey, you're all good. Yeah, I mean, I think the likes of Stewie does that uh, when he's holding an angle for too long. Like, if he was, say, holding apartments there, he would have just been left, right, left, right the whole time to keep awake. But, uh, yeah, for Lucid Dream, PTC's the, the pivotal figure in this round. He wants to be taking most of the fights so that if he dies, they can pick up that AWP. Nice bait to start mm. with, but Olivia's too quick getting off that angle. I mean, I liked, like how they were going to have Leaf go out. So PTC would get the shot into that spot. But I don't think they expected Olivia to hit the hit Leaf in the dome. I don't think Leaf expected. I think Leaf's picture kind of sums it up perfectly. Like, really? Where's the refrag? Mm -hmm. Kind of disappointment. I'd love it if we had separate pictures, like one of them smiling for when they're alive and then one yeah. of them looking sad when they're dead. That'd be great. Let's do that some event. PTC, okay. So the original fight in Palace was basically to win him the angle so he could hold into jungle or hopefully find a trade if he's lucky. But he couldn't find it because they smoked it out. Oh, no. I thought they had a chance here. Can't I mean, it was only the op right for PTC, right? Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was about to ask, where's the smokes? Where's the flashes? Oh, Just course. give me a set execute to A, Lucid Dream. A set execute. They like to be very mid-heavy. They played passively at B. At least they have with a double off. And then go for the post plant. Though I would imagine the post plants, as we saw before, it's going to be a little bit weak. This shot, though, that's a hell of a shot. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, the, the thing is, the whole point of that fight was to pull the op off the angle. Hopefully on his retreat, you hit the shot. If not, you hold it. But they smoked him out. At that point, they'd won back the angle. Uh, PTC wasn't going to stand there 30 seconds and wait. So instead, he makes a rotate to ramp, finds the opening duel, but just got shut down by KNTZ there. Here's the set executes A you asked for, Jason. 
And with the passive hold by Beyond, without even losing a player, they're going to have to concede this and allow the bomb plan to come through. Yeah, that, that's fine, though. I think they're going to be fine with that. Well, they will lose KNTZ. That was the smoke. They have still so much utility left to use on the retake and on the side of Lucid Dream. Three flashes and a smoke. Time to start ticking. The Cinder is coming through to force him out of positions. At least clear those angles out. Fox trying to watch over towards stairs. He's not going to be gifted any shots just yet. John Olsen's going to respawn, though. That's the first towards Sandwich. He gets himself a second. Now, Olivia and Myrel's double ops. I think you just run away. I think you just save this. Maybe try to get a couple of kills here to punish them. Keep their economy in check. But that's going to be Lucid Dream getting around. And hey, maybe I should become a coach. Because I, I, I swear, before that round began, I said we should just see... Set execute towards A. Oh, oh wow. That was damn close. Let me know how that goes for you, Jason. <laughs> Let me know how the coaching goes. I mean, it, it can't be worse than my casting career. My casting's oh, terrible, so. Fair. You ever think about Overwatch coaching? You go back there. I mean. It'd be pretty easy, I'd imagine. You just go like, hey guys, so what you gotta do is just don't play this game. Uh, or, or uh, you see the comp they're running? Yeah, it just run that, but better. <laughs> it's exactly the same. I, I think, I think I'd be a great Overwatch coach. Be like, all right, this is this game called CS:GO. Use that to warm up your aim, and then don't stop playing it. And that, that, that's what we're gonna do. It's not a bad idea. Not a bad strategy. Oh, Olivia. Okay, so maybe it was just some fluff shots earlier on. Oh yeah, I mean, He's definitely I'll, woken up. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. It's, it's early. Well, maybe not for him, but it's early for us. So okay, let's, NZZ. let's give it to him. He's going to be peaked. John Olsen is just close clear in that. I, I think either way, he's going to be looking very close to it. Mayroll swings out, but couldn't get the scope in in time. John Olsen, double openings, looks for more. The flash around the corner doesn't catch Olivia, but John still follows through. Delivers on a 3K, opening up the A side by himself. And there you see actually something from Lucid Dream that we haven't for a while. Great team play. John's got flashes coming around the corner. He's peeking and finding duels. Now the first one, sure, he didn't. But there in the third kill, you see it when he's going in for the aggressive CT control. Flash around the corner. An easy kill. I'm just more confused in how they walk into the A site. And get that close. The KNTZ. Oh, the timing. SDK looks to turn around and gets caught out. They survive with four players. They do get the fourth on the board. But again, you know, if we remember back to last week, most teams, if not all teams on this map, would put up like 11 rounds T side. Obviously not going to be possible anymore. It's already a little bit of a struggle just to look back on their previous results for Lucid Dream. Yeah, they had a 12-3 half up against D13 on Mirage. And ended up winning the map against them. And they had well, only four rounds against the 11 up against Vici, but that's Vici. That's kind of expected, I guess. And then they had a 10-5 half up against Divine Vendetta on Mirage. So they definitely can put up big numbers, but they're starting to struggle here. Best they can do is a 9-6 if I can do math correctly. I Man, I'm not a... Uh... I, I think the point that we're at now essentially decides who's going to be dominating the half or, or who can. Like if Beyond win the next round, you're in a spot. I, I mean, they're doing an awful lot of damage considering the pistols. Luckily, it stops there. But if Beyond win this round, they should be able to pull up to, to a decent position. At least get eight on the board, hopefully hit the nine. But for Lucid Dream, they're in a spot where... Beyond are investing all of their money. A win here guarantees them seven rounds. At that point, they're going to be comfortable. And Mirage can be more of a 50-50 map, I think, a lot of the time than what we'll see in the likes of an Inferno or a Nuke later on. Um, if you're getting, you know, an 8-7 T side there, you're going to be over the moon. What a shot by Olivia. Swinging through to PTC. Top mid control. Not quite taken out of the hands of Lucid Dream, but at least threatened. QQ wins the fight and apartments are up in Palace, excuse me. And with that, 
a two-man advantage. I mean, Lucid Dream needs something for the men they've lost, and it looks like they're going in for the B site. 789's looking for control. His teammates aren't there to support him. They even started moving towards underpass and slowing it down for a second. That costs a little bit more time left, and they're threatened and alone, but luckily, they're able to follow through still. Another for Fox, a smoke in the window to stop the push out, and now a bomb plan should easily be possible. I thought this was a done round. They got two first tries. It was a three on five. Down to the three on three. Down to three on two in their advantage. QQ falls. He went over towards short. KNTZ is finally going to respawn, but at least on three health, and he has to hit these shots. Fox needs to stay alive to stop this retake from coming through. We're going to be looking at a 7 5 scoreline. He's going to hit the first. KNTZ falls, and now it's STK in the one on one. Three HP left. He doesn't have a kit, though, so he has five seconds left to play with here. Leaf's not peeking it. And he's not even going to spot the barrel. He's going to have to just stick it now. Leaf can just come around the corner and go for the knife. And Leaf will do that. He's going to miss the first off shot. Pistols come through. Oh, don't tell me you're going to lose this Leaf. You what? He came off the bomb. What? No. Terrorists win. Why did he do that? What? I'm lost. Did, did he not have time? Did I misread the situation? I, I presume so? I mean, I gotta wait three minutes now to see the diffuse timer on the UI, but he had over 10 seconds when he started. I don't know how he wouldn't have to. I guess I, he accidentally let go of it? I don't know. That was inc incredibly weird. It was four seconds left. He was being spammed by a Glock and had, what, 80 HP? Yeah. He, he was solid and on health. As we could see, Leaf was nowhere near his opponent. Yeah, it's not like he was being yeah, pummeled by the Glock shots. He was still safe. That was so bizarre. I'm going to wait for this to come back up on the stream so I can see if it was just maybe misre me misreading the situation, if he didn't have time, but I swear he did. I thought so too. I actually, because it's early morning and we're, we've had a little bit of a break and we're getting back into using this UI, I forgot we can see the diffuse timer on the left. It's one of those things that just doesn't process in my head. It's day one. We're getting back <laughs> into the swing of things, I guess. <laughs> That's unfortunate too. Again, that was a five on three in favor of Beyond. Let's not go with the shot there. Um, five on three in favor of Beyond. And they go to lose the round and Leaf just, he wins it for him with three HP. I mean, I don't want to say he wins it for him. That was not even him playing well. That was just a mistake being made. That ties things up at six apiece. Olivia going to be back on the op again. As I saved it from the round before. They have a little bit of money if they lose a round. And Mario's is quickly going to come to the realization that, ah, oh, crap, they're coming towards B. Olivia's rotated in, but he's been smoked off. Well, we see three Deagles. And we're going to see a CT Jeez. round. Oh, my God. What is this? Two players just jumping out of the window. And it's like bungee jumping without a cord. They land and die immediately. Well, that's depressing. Seven to six, lose a dream. They set themselves up for success and immediately took a dive. Okay. The stream's about to catch up to where a defuse was. I'm waiting so I'll to I'll be able this. to give us that information. But that, I mean, that round right there, I was gonna say we have three deagles. Maybe three's the magic number today. Three ops, let's do it. That's the way to go. Yeah, I'm full street. I'm, I'm super focused on this now. I really yeah. want to see if he had time. No, I want to know. I, I want to. He know. had time. He had time. Yeah, I, I, he had about a second extra. You always got to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe we're messing up. But yeah, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. The fact that he just decides to stop. I think the smoke might have been about to fade, and, and he got a little bit worried. But come on, dude, you got to just stick it in that situation. Got to try to win the round. Oh god, the knife is coming in. Leaf just ran out. Palace takes an AK, gets a, sh a nice shot up the top stairs. And he's looking to pull them back into it, but the god of 1v2s isn't winning today. His divinity called into question as John Olsen's left in a 1 versus 2 himself. He's got to pull off what only Leaf could. And unfortunately, he can't quite do it. Eight rounds for beyond in the strangest of ways. And you know what, Jason? I'm going to just stop. At this point, I'm going to completely give up 
on saying, oh, well, if they win this round, then their opponents are eco, so that should be a second round. No, no longer. We're taking it round by round. There is no such thing <laughs> as, as a guaranteed second. I think I'd agree with you in that, especially when you got Invictus playing. Okay, so flashbang through. They're gonna rush up to ramp. They smoke, or actually smoke off the Molotov. They're going extremely fast. Will they check KNTZ? Well, they will. They'll get some decent damage done, but they get the kill either way. QQ now pushing through the smoke. He stops the bomb from being planted. And now they can wait out these smokes almost. Uh, almost. Like, we need to see Lucid Dream pick up the bomb and get the play, but Olivia's gonna deny that. The smokes are gonna start to dissipate and fade away. And this is just such an awkward round. 9 6 for Beyond is the conclusion of that first half, but I. What even? I mean, I can respect the rush through. But not going for a safe plant, that's a little bit confusing. It has been a confusing half so far, Jason. And, you know, I woke up today and I was like, oh, well, I don't know what happened last week. But I think this week, you know, everything's going to be leveled out. Everything, all the crazy plays that were happening and the, the games that didn't make sense, they're gone. Yeah, they're behind us. It's the week one jitters, the start of the group stage. It happens. Boy, so oh boy, was the... I wrong. Coming out, yeah, I was gonna say, so what do we call what's happening now if we're not gonna call it, you know, jitters? I don't want to even guess. That's, uh, it's uh, honestly super unhappy fun times. <laughs> super unfun times. Uh, they're, uh, my god, things are not going according to plan, are they, for Lucid Dream? My god, yeah. Yeah, One, Drone two, and McDrone face even wanted to come in in this round because he, even he thinks it's gonna be over. <laughs> Oh, okay. Not the chance. Don't make drone face. I mean, I'm glad he's not gonna be betting with my money. <laughs> it's not over just yet. He's got a kit. He's gonna have a potential one v. Oh. What? Oh no. Oh no! Don't miss your shots. Don't oh, knife him. Thank God. Some sort of sense of normality. But credit to 789. That was a hell of a round. That was one hell of a round, my god. Headshot after headshot. We thought he had it so close, but not today. As Beyond go up to double digits, Lucid Dream have got to be getting worried. They're down to an eco. Not going to say that means they lose the round because you just never know. 789 just gleefully switching to his knife and back, QQing all the way. As we come into this round, you know, it is just USPs. Realistically, we shouldn't be looking at many losses for the T side. It should be clean. Yeah, did you forget match for casting? <laughs> They've got SMGs, you know, three of them on the T side, so it's not like the CT stand a great chance. Now let's watch them get an ace. I can see it happening. Fox and the P250. Okay. Oh, not gonna happen. All right, maybe so it's gonna be super clean. All right, we will have a clean round. That's 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 more of a normal round for uh, how that should go. Get themselves up to 11-6. We're gonna see the buy up for Lucid Dream again. The the bonus round coming through for Beyond with the three SMGs. I, I would imagine this has got to be like a three-two split a day, or she's got to be a, a B rush. Leaf on a scout. A hell of a weapon. I mean, it can it can soften up these guys for the M4s. I think it might impede his one v two abilities, but we'll see if he can. Uh, or maybe it'll enhance it. Maybe he'll just avoid getting into those scenarios. <laughs> Doesn't look like he'll, he's going to have any say though as they move in towards the B site. This is fully stacked up. It was a solo hold with a scout on A. Now the rifles come out to play, but oh man, they're not having a good day. Both shut down, a short completely opens up. John Olsen and PTC look to hold down B, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot to do unless John Olsen gets three and pulls them way into the lead. May rolls on 25 health, and he doesn't survive all too much longer. What a hold by John. I mean, he gets four kills. They lose a lot of players. They're going to have to rebuy up into and their rebuy is not going to be nice. I mean, 789 was on 3300. They dropped one to him. Fox on 1200. He gets dropped. PTC. He didn't actually. I think he was fine on money, I guess. Leaf was struggling. Still a scrappy buy, and technically now, if you're uh, if you're beyond and you win this round, they're going to be on an eco, and you're going to see yourself up potentially at 13. 
I mean, they even almost have the round. If John Wilson doesn't get the, those kills, they get the super happy fun time again. Yeah, bonus on the bonus. Like exhibit would be happy. Heard you like bonus round, so we put a bonus round in your bonus round. So you could bonus round while you bonus round. No, oh, here's the B push. Lucid Dream look to hold on yet again. PTC's good for one, baits them in. Fox from afar doing the damage. And although he gets taken down, the kills are still easily going their way with BTC going in to get another 4K on the B hold. That's himself and John Olsen. Two rounds in a row and beyond. Well, I hope they've learned their lesson, but if they haven't, got another round to. As they should just be a light buy with pistols. They can afford deagles, but do they buy them? No. No, not happening. P250, yeah. Tech 9, yeah. Some utility, yeah. Are they? Oh, no. If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> maybe try to think of a different strategy. But What's no. the definition of insanity? It's repeating the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. Well, I guess this is a little bit different because they've got pistols, so that is the only variance on it. The smoke on QQ to allow them to drop it on a Molotov. Problem is, they're getting dropped by the SMG up close. Moneymaker for Leaf. He has hit the jackpot in this bonus round. It's like he's on a game show. Stacking up his cash high, looking in for another player. I'd just go for the reload at this point, mate. Yeah, there you go. Get an extra MP9 kill. Why not? No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop! You're definitely too young to know what that is. Not a clue. I thought you just had a stroke. <laughs> I, I, I actually wonder if Blood knows what I'm talking about. If he knows the game show. This is like, this is like mid-80s. Late-80s. Sick game show, though. It was like a futuristic... Tons of TVs. I'll show you a video after. Okay. Thing of beauty. So Leaf builds up a lot of cash in this round. Another one under their pocket. And the SMG's picking up every kill in that round. And we still have yet to see a full buy out of Beyond. Full buy in the sense of, you know, full AKs or AKs and off with utility to back it up. There's still some holes within what they're currently using. So a chance for Lucid Dreams to, to build up some momentum. To get one step closer to tying things up. Stabilize that economy. They already have three players on 5k or more. Maybe this is the bounce back for Lucid Dream. I mean, they, they again, they, they won it the two times out of three they played it. The only team they lost to was Vici. And already off the bat, QQ's fallen. I mean, with QQ down, Lucid Dream get aggressive even further. This is just catching beyond completely off guard. As PTC went through the smoke in the connector, finds a kill, and bails back. Beyond, now in a spot where they shouldn't expect any more aggression. That's why 789 says, hey, you know what? It's my turn. I'm low HP. Going in on the left corner, they check it, though. They saw that booty sticking out, and they gave it a big smack. Too many squats. You need to stop working out. Exactly. Myrals. That's going to be two for him. Olivia, again, great refrag comes through. Actually does get in towards jungle being shot from short. They have the A side open, and they're going to get the plant down. There's a big rotate, though, out of Leaf in towards T spawn. And I almost am certain they're not going to expect this. If Olivia hears the running, though. Oh, no. Fox has fallen. All he had to do was kind of just wait. But I guess he didn't expect the aggression. And now it leaves Leaf alone. He said he was the 1v2 master. The problem with this is, you've already got K and TZ clearing out spawn. He knows he's not here. They know he's not connector. They know he's not jungle. Where can he come from? Well, ramp or palace, and they know now it's ramp as Olivia falls, but he was low HP. Now it's KNTZ to deal with. Last spotted towards jungle. No info on where he is. Leaf's running around like an absolute lunatic trying to find some info. Drops the smoke. Here's the peek from KNTZ, though. Before it even blooms, he's got the shot. And so Beyond win out that round. And I think we're yet to see the real threatening part of Beyond. When Olivia gets that AWP out, that's when I start to get worried. At the same time, PTC can do a lot of damage with it, and he will win the race to the AWP, pulling it out for, I think, the first time that we've seen it in this half so far. It's quite late. I think, I almost think there's a world, by the way, where that smoke does plume, and Leaf sticks to defuse and pulls it off. I can totally see that happening with how this match has gone so far, with bombs and smokes. There's also a world where he... Diffuses it down to one second left and runs away. 
Oh, crap, I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know when, when you're playing matchmaking and the enemies go, no time? So you say, oh, no, I don't have time, okay. Runs away. It's like, mate, there was 20 seconds left in the clock. I didn't think I had no, time. I didn't have time. <laughs> they told me. I needed to pick up the AWP and T-spawn. <laughs> oh, my rolls. You've seen him be successful pushes like that before. He will be shut down with a nice flash ping at a PTC. Something we, again, criticized Lucid about. We're starting to see that teamwork come into light. 789. I mean, he's pushed up a QQ. He's going to get the better of him. It's going all the way of beyond now. Four on two. PTC almost has to think about the next round and saving the AWP. Finally, the bomb that's make its way through. It's going to be Olivia to be carrying it. And they're both towards CT spawn, but they're, they're peaking PTC. Why oh. are you peaking PTC? Stop peaking them. SDK, long range with the MAC-10 gets the kill. Leaf on 26 health. This is doable. And he's trying to just hide out and bait him into thinking that Leaf is to... Oh my god. So SDK wanted to bait him into thinking that he was towards the, the connector. But Leaf had the perfect angle there for the swing out. Obviously, he thought the player was on the left side. You could see by where he was looking, but... It's easy to hit the flick when the player is 20 HP. Well, I think I think Leaf taps the bomb at first, and it pulls mm -hmm. the STK back. Yeah. Because he was going to run for connector. Like, he was 100% about to do it. I mean, he hears the bomb being tapped, and he's like, okay, I have to stick around. I have to check it. If he has a kit, it's going to take me over five seconds to be able to see the bomb again. But I don't know why you peak PTC. Yeah, that, that's the thing, right? You already talked can do. You see the AWPs there, you swing one after another after another. Give him every single opportunity to win that round. And well, he took them. Oh, but they got the deagles, though. It's four of them. It's Olivia with the hero AK. I think week on week we've got to change our formula, right? Based on what we're seeing today, so... The jury's out. Four deagles. Does it result in a round win? Is this the formula for the week that will be guaranteed to work? Well, we'll find out as they look to hit this A bomb site mid control already in their favor, but they have left the bomb way back in T spawn. Right, maybe it's the magic formula to solve world hunger. By maybe it's the deagles. coronavirus cure. I don't know how it would be. You, you never know. Inject those deagles straight in your veins. Find out. <laughs> See the next announcement. I mean, from the uh, the president. <laughs> Oh, well, at, at his rate, I think that's probably a better proposition than what he's bringing to the table. <laughs> just, just inject some bleach. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It cleans you. No, I mean, next thing he'll be saying, that, you know, Tide Pods are delicious. <laughs> Tide some for and lunch. Nutritious. Feel great. Yeah. <laughs> just a disclaimer. I make the best for, Tide Pods the best. For the sake of I PGL, please don't yeah. inject bleach. <laughs> don't drink it. It will kill you. Don't eat Tide Pods. Although we don't have them in Europe, but things that look like them. I think I think most Americans are asleep, so I don't want to have to make that disclaimer. <laughs> most people are going to realize that's a bad idea. And most people. And I can from, say that because I am American. And most people here are from Europe and Asia, so we're okay. No one's in danger. That took a while. The PTC's cleaned it up. Man, at the moment, Lucid Dreamer getting away with murder, honestly. I, I think Beyond are getting a little bit too big for the boost, a little bit too cocky. Uh, some of the plays Lucid have been pulling out have been nice. You saw, like, the re-aggression and connector, for example. And those plays always interest me as well, Jason, because I have to say, when you see a team take mid control, you find the opening duel and you pull back. And then a player goes through the smoke, hides in connector and finds a kill. It's just as easy for him to look like an idiot as a genius. If he dies there, you're like, why would you give away the man advantage? But when it works, it's really smart aggression. So it's it's one of those things. You you either... Uh... Well, it's like the victor writes history, right? Well, exactly. Exactly. I think it's one of those things though, where it's very dangerous in the, in the commentary world or the analysis world to look at something and say, it worked out, therefore it's good. That's definitely not how it works. I like the connector aggression. I think it's a risk. Not one he had to take, but... You have to vary your gameplay. You can't just go, oh, let's go into default positions. And like, that that's not how this game works. Uh, you got to take risks sometimes, and, and sometimes it pays off. But it's about understanding when to take those risks. And even if it fails, it's like, yeah, you, as long as you can see the idea behind it. So they're trying to set up for a B play. Myrel's been able to get in towards ladder room. I'm going to push in towards short. I'm not sure if they expect Leaf to be here. Well, it doesn't matter if they do. Game to is going to fall. QQ's going to respawn. Unfortunately, PTC can't hit more than one, but you still have Fox here. Shot off some bullets. They know he's going to be here, and that's going to be a clean, quick kill. 
John Olsen still alive. He had a quad kill earlier on from this position. Not this time. And now 789. And the one on two. STK's low on HP. Please don't peek into him one on one. And Olivia will close that out. But this has been, yeah, 9 6 half. You know, understandable. It's been an awkward 9 6. It's been even more of an awkward 13 11. I mean, we're seeing the save come in for Lucid Dream. Beyond won that round, but they, I mean, you pointed out perfectly what they needed to do, not peak alone. And what did they do? Peak alone. They won the fight. So it might look like what they did was good, but it was not. <laughs> That's another one of those things, you know, just because it works doesn't mean it's good. And for beyond 13 to 11, but yeah, you can see the mistakes they're making. You can see the opportunities they're giving. And you can see why I was saying Lucid Dream, they can take a map off beyond. With the current map pool, it doesn't seem too likely. Although I do think I agree with Blair that Mirage was a very odd pick. I wouldn't come in and try to just heads up confidence a team like Beyond. It was it was their strongest map, I think. For sure, but uh, as Dinko even said, you know, sort of playing into the strengths of your opponents as well. I, I get playing your own game, thinking about yourself and the veto and what map you're most comfortable on, but there's a certain point where you got to think these guys are just better than us. Um, and when you come, yeah, that's, a, that's like a very Mirage. defeatist attitude, though, right? Like. Obviously, sure. I mean, whether or not the facts are true, I don't think that's a mindset you want to have as a team, you know, going oh, no. into a, a to a series. Not going into a series, but I think that's where the captain or whoever, the, sometimes it's the coach, whoever's doing the, the veto needs to have a, a very grounded and realistic approach to the game. Because at the end of the day, th that aspect of Counter-Strike is just statistics. It's just analysis. There shouldn't be any kind of, um, I don't know, emotion behind a veto. I think that's uh it's like saying, Oh, our nuke's all right. Okay, so we're gonna pick nuke against Astralis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I don't know I don't care how confident you are. You don't do that. It, it, it was what Singularity did versus North when they picked Vertigo and we were just like, Why would you do this, you fools? And they got absolutely stomped on it and it's like, Yeah, okay, you're you're a good Vertigo team, but North played it like twenty four times in, in three months. I don't <laughs> just don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. And we go for That was an expensive there. round by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was actually pretty costly. They get three kills with like minimum investment. But now, like we're seeing, we're going into potentially a 15th round win for Beyond here. This is pretty much the last chance saloon. You can see Leaf on the off this time, not PTC. So I'm changing some things up. Actually have him going over towards the B site, which seems to be the direction the T's are heading. Oh, this is perfect for Leaf. Straight out the window as well. He's bailed successfully. That nade was perfect by Fox. Exactly what it was meant to do. It, it put smoke around the, the Molotov or something. Oh, QQ surely doesn't get that second kill. He's already lit Leaf up and there you go. I mean, that started out so well for Lucid Dream. Losing Fox there, they even still looked good because the Leaf had the AWP. The rotates were almost there, but they arrived just a second too late. Bomb still not planted and 789 is able to drop it in the open, just jumping out of kitchen. Crossfire eventually works out, but QQ's got to get a 4k, and PTC's on the rotate. Three health remaining. He's got to rely on catching this player off guard. Misses the jump up to short. It's going to have to be the long way for him, and as he's on his way, QQ's clearing out kitchen. He's seeing absolutely no movement, and on the back of that, he just tucks in like a turtle over towards the van, clears out up above in the apartments. Still seeing the site to be clear. I mean, he has got to be getting a little bit suspicious. I mean, you're seeing PGC's attention being pulled back over towards mid, expecting maybe QQ to get aggressive, which is kind of what he's doing here. But with only 27 seconds left, I don't think he has the time to really get back towards the A site unless he goes for the full sprint. Even tapping the bomb, he's really unsure where PTC is going to be. Thing is, it's going to take more than one shot to kill QQ. I can't say the same thing for PTC, but he spots him out! Oh, what a clutch in for PTC, saving the round for them, maybe saving the map as well. QQ's decision making there was a little bit odd. Plant the bomb, stand right on it in the open. Exposed to short and kitchen, he was almost certain PTC was coming from one of those angles. I, I can't quite say I understand that play. But I can't, you can't put the onus of the round on him. I mean, the rest of the team really needed to do something else. When that push came out, I don't know how 789 is able to do what he did. QQ was out watching short for the push up. 
The players on site, though, just gave all the freedom to the CT side to get back out there and do some damage. Joni McJoan face. First appearance in day six. 54 grenades being used. Didn't we have something like ridiculous? I remember last week, I think it was on the fourth or fifth day. It was like some some ridiculous amount of grenades and it was like only like one half of play. Yeah, it was. It goes around 50s. It was indeed. Throwing his entire kit every round. Yeah, it was just took the belt off, pulled all the pins and chucked it at someone. <laughs> Get flashed, blown up, and burned alive all, all at once. I feel like they should almost add some realism to the game. Where if you get flashed, like a certain amount of... Actually, the more you get flashed, the more permanently deaf you become in-game. So eventually, if you hit, eat like 10 flashes, you just can't hear anything. You just hear a ringing in your headphones. <laughs> that, I'm glad you don't design games, Jason. Very happy about that. I mean, maybe like an April Fool's Day, they do that. Yeah, maybe. Like, the more you shoot, if you use the A4, you're just going to go deaf from spraying it. So everyone switches to the A1S for a day. <laughs> they should attach some, like, crappy silencer to any gun. This is still, uh, like, a risky kind of proposition here for Lucidry. They don't have the best to buy up. So Leave trying to get close against my rolls. SMG versus SMG and beyond. They get the first two kills. John Olsen's going to be there. He might be able to force Myrolls to go for the challenge. Of the Molly is a little bit too deep here. But Myrolls goes for the challenge either way. Down to the three on three. One grenade left for STK. QQ trying to make sure to watch the back, which PTC might be well, having an inkling for. He did head back in that direction, but they come from the same spot. And QQ's here to watch this angle. Oh, this is going to be tough for the retake. They're all going to come out, but he misses the shots. PTC connects. Two players on low HP. STK can't do anything. And now Olivia with the AK left alone. Time is ticking away. They're going to go for the defuse. He gets the tag. He's almost getting the spray. He gets the kill. Eight seconds left. They're going to have the kit. They're going to have the defuse. And we're going into a 13th round here for Lucid Dream. Another wild situation. Beyond had so much time to play with. They take every fight one at a time. I get nothing for those first two. A 3v3. Lucid Dream are going to retake out of Kitchen. Nobody's in position on site to swing to take those players down. So QQ really shouldn't be playing that angle. He should be further back on short watching the cross to up close if that's how the approach is on site. And it looks like it's just blatant miscommunication by the T side or just lack of organization in how they're going to play in those late rounds. They have an approach to the early. They have a let's get to site and we're going to get to the B site. This is how we're going to get there. But no one's thought about what happens when you're actually there, or no one's communicating. Something is going wrong, that's for sure, because that was sloppy. I mean, I think I think sloppy is like not a bad word to describe a couple of rounds. To be honest, again, thinking back to that defuse where you had time and he came off the bomb. Mm -hmm. But again, there's four deagles. There's a tech nine for beyond side. I already that last turn was a lot closer than maybe it should have been. He's gonna just solo push up or towards B short. There will be a player there as the rest of the team is looking to, to push in out of apartments. I think they're gonna be spotted here in a second by Lee. Flashbang comes through. Cinder throw down. No smoke to cover it off. They split the entire team. SDK gets the first kill towards site. Leaf gonna respawn though with a nice flick. He pushes up against SDK. Now there's gonna be support out of Olivia in towards apartments, and Olivia hits the shot. Oh man, they're gonna get the plan off of this, and it comes down once again to the retake. And Lucid Dream really not fans of making it easy for themselves, but that Molly makes it so much easier. John also didn't even realize he got two kills on that spray. He's looking around. Where's the last guy? Where is he? You just killed him, John. He's on 26 kills. I mean, he was also a talking point we had about he he does have the potential to play easily at the level, if not further than beyond esports individually. But the consistency of it hasn't been there this tournament. That's exactly it, right? We're saying that the previous Aura More event, he was pretty fun to watch. Now things have slowed down. But in this game right here, yeah, he's, he's back on form. John Olsen has returned. Long has it been awaited. It's been prophesized. Or prophesized. 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 <laughs> I can't really tell the difference asleep. between what you were saying. Prophesized. Sounds like you just said prophesized seven different times. <laughs> And then I said it with a TH, prophesized. <laughs>
Oh, you're you're an interesting man. I'm having Jason. a stroke. <laughs> yeah, I really think I was I was on point earlier on with my guess. Oh, the flash through the push. Seven, eight, nine gets one. The return isn't there, but look, it's a four v three. That's it. They've already won the early round. The problem is, I think Fox is stuck in underpass now. He's gonna have to try to bail on back. Luckily, though, the T's have completely abandoned their posts. They've lost one towards Palace now at two v four and beyond. In danger of losing this map, Fox makes it out of underpass towards the B site. He's the only one here. If they can deal with him, a bomb plant should come in. And then a 2v3 with Mayrolls and Olivia that I would feel quite confident could go Beyond's way. Well, after the last two rounds, I I, I don't know if I'd agree. If Sindiri comes down, they have a smoke for it. They're going to use it. Rotations have come through. They're going to have two, now three players to defend the site. They're going to have to hit some ridiculous shots. And look at this angle for Fox. He doesn't hit the shots himself. Lucid Dream do get themselves indeed to 15, and the money's not going to be there for Beyond. This could be Lucid Dream stealing away this map when they never should have had a chance. I mean, even just look at the mistakes that Beyond made, though, so far. It's been very wild. The post plants have been horrendous. We saw people defusing the bomb and then running away when they've got more than enough time to actually defuse it. This whole map has just been a disaster for them and i think resetting into the next is going to be more than likely what they have to do they've already lost the opening duel coming into this round they have to recover it in a 4v5 no control of top mid as they come in through underpass they're lucky that no one from lucid dream has been poking for that map control they've left it they've allowed top mid to sit firmly in favor of the t side as they come out it'll be a boost up olivia sneaky beaky like coming in through the window but they're going to check it. John Olsen's on his way. The Terminator of the CT side. But Olivia manages to catch him off guard. The timing was perfect. Yeah, they just need to deal with Connector. And they do so expertly. Moving towards the A site. With a man advantage to play with PTC on the op. Only good for one. This is looking much better for Beyond. And we should be seeing an overtime. Three on two. There can't possibly be a chance they're going to throw this one away. Olivia in towards window, he's trying to lock down any sort of presence out of Fox, looking to get in there. Both players coming in from connector, QQ spots out the first, gets the kill. And Fox now left alone, maybe there's still a chance for Beyond in this map. And we will indeed see overtime here in our first game of the day, in our first map of the day. John Olsen on 27 kills, KTZ, or KNTZ on 28. Myrose is actually having the quiet game for once. And unfortunately for Fox, he hasn't really been able to get going, finishing the, the regulation time on 10. I don't know what to make of this first map, to be honest. I know it's a it's a it's a local bout, local match between two tie teams. Mm -hmm. They obviously know each other inside and out. But there's just been a lot of mistakes being made. Oh yeah. It's been very unusual, just even for this region, even for the games we've seen so far, it's very odd to see this many questionable plays all at once. In a game that Beyond are, are looking quite uh, decent, and I, I think the majority of the mistakes have been on their part. So maybe it's not entirely uh, down to them having problems more so than them just not coming in on their A game, knowing they're against Lucid Dream, maybe they think this is going to be an easy matchup. It's not uncommon, right, for teams to come in and not give the full respect to their fellow countrymen. You know, if you're the, the big fish in the region, you're going to just kind of... Uh, well, what a lot of teams do is look down upon the other ones there and kind of think, oh, well, yeah, we'll stomp these guys easy. Because they've, they've probably played with these players. They've probably trialed them for their team at one point. I mean, it's a pretty decent chance. The thing is, some of these guys could genuinely be on that Beyond line. You'd look at someone like John Olsen, like PTC at times, certainly considering he's IGLing as well. And look at this, the aggressive IGL. He wants to get in their face. They're holding for it. The head spotted, the shot hit. The fade back's going to be next to impossible, though. Yeah, they didn't quite catch out my rolls. We're seeing a Krieg for the first time this entire tournament. Almost forgot that, that weapon existed, to be honest. 
I mean, there was a good couple of years where we didn't see it ever. And then we saw it every game. Every, yeah, we only saw it. Look, like just eco till the creek. Oh my gosh, this is a, wow. QQ finally gets revenge from the round of the CT side where he peaks connected <laughs> towards middle and 789 wasn't even looking at him and then just flicks directly towards his head. 789 Four shot. on three. Was still yeah. more impressive. It was, it's true. It was like, what, a um, 180 or like probably 140 degree flick. It was gorgeous. I, I think it was like 142.5 degrees. Oh, okay. You're doing the calculation. I brought out my uh, compass and measured it. <laughs> Jason's a Terminator. Forgot to tell you guys. I think Beyond have got this one. They've certainly locked down the A site. It's more a question of how they play this. You know, KNTZ can't move forward uh, within jungle. If he tries to cross from window to jungle, he's going to be spotted by John. You ready for this, Jason? You ready? For oh, they're not saving. It's tank AOT, guys. Be careful. They're playing trash overtime. But no, it looks like they are going to go for it. I respect it. Let's see what you got, Lucid Dream. I'm, I'm in your corner now. You're not giving us a terrible OT. QQ and KNTZ both low. Yeah, but it, 2v4, you have to go for a save, really. They don't know about the HP of their opponents. It's a shame. Look at KNTZ, though. He's trying to get ahead of them. I don't think they're going to get past my rolls at the moment, or even QQ is peeking in. One kill. And, well, KNTZ should be able to close this out. If not, a little. Okay. It was an op. You just lost now. Terrorists win. It's a worthwhile trade, really. I mean, John Olsen's more than happy. Three kills, AWP carried forward. Hell yeah. Now, look, the T's aren't going to have money problems, but counter terrorists aren't going to have as much weight on their shoulders because they get that free op. The 10 KOT is trash for a number of reasons. Uh, the main one is that you see teams save a lot of the time where a retake would be possible. Like even in that 2v4, they would still go for that if this was 16K. But Valve mandates that for the Valve events, it's 10K because they hate us. I don't know. Well, now I know why you're not doing any majors. <laughs> I was watching this like, I can see Gabe and right now just watching this like, who is this guy? Well, hopefully- Who if do I need to pay to kill him? Hopefully if one of them's watching, they'll change it to 16K. I mean, like every other tournament has. That's that. That's the thing that always confuses me. You know, if it's standard within the community, why are the biggest tournaments, the majors, not running with that? Because it's not. It's not like when ESL do it, when PGL do it, they don't get a choice. You know, they, they have to do 10k. It's just all it. Well, the saved op is going to be dismantled. PTC is going to fall. I like this aggression though towards a ramp. No one actually spotted out. And look at this. QQ has an idea though. This is a little bit of a flip of the script. The CT is now trying to push back in towards the A side from A ramp. There's a Molotov flash is being thrown in to keep them back, to keep them at bay. QQ peeks around. He's going to fall to the first. I don't know if he expects a second player to be there, though, but it doesn't seem to matter. STK pushes in towards CT spawn. There's no pressure coming from that direction. Even KT's getting the spray, so they know at least one player is going to be towards A ramp. The second going to be spotted out. And that's two rounds back to back on the T side for Beyond. Well, here we go. Lucid Dream. They bring wow, look out at the, the direct duels. We're we're, we're out down the bottom. Okay, eight to two. Yeah, <laughs> it took yes, me a while. I was going through kills, cast. Eighty. What was he talking about? I see. And here's the problem with this overtime. You got Famas. You've got an SMG as well on Leaf. John Olson and PTC on Ops. No pistols to back them up. No head armor. Not that, that makes a big difference in this situation. Up against AKs and Kriegs and Ops. And very little utility. That's another problem. This round is going to be a big struggle. But with that double op setup, they might just be able to make up for the lack of utility. Use those longer range sight lines that should be left open. Also, the thing is, Jason, you can see they would not have a second op had they have had John also not have been able to save it in the first round of overtime. And there's the impact. But will it get them around? Utility is almost non-existent then to defend. You got Fox and PTC with the last pieces remaining. And currently, those players are over at the B site. So maybe you're going to use them on the retake. They have... Like, oh, it just comes down to raw aim now. John Olsen, 31 kills. Looking for number 32. Maybe number 33. 
It's the leg shot, and look at this. The CTs are putting up a formidable defense here. Fantasy can't get the spray down. Eventually closes it out as he picks up the one, but it seems like it's one and done for the rest of his team. John Olsen, another 3K, 34 kills, as they will take one round in the first half of overtime. I think John Olsen just can't be stopped. 34 frags, as you said, you know, he's playing like an absolute animal. And I think as we move forward, we've got to uh, we got to keep an eye on him. This guy's going to do some some big work in this tournament alone for Lucid Dream. He's been a a missing factor in some of the games. But if he keeps this up, they can actually win some of their upcoming. The issue, I guess, for Lucid is that the games they've had have been D13, Vici. Those were hard rounds, hard games to try and win. Then they come up against Divine Vendetta. They win that. They've still got to play Bren, Mazalai. So their, their chances of staying in and into playoffs are pretty high. I'd be surprised if they don't make playoffs. I said that from the start. But, uh, and so far we haven't even seen their, their, their true form, I guess. Their full power. Here we go with the push out towards the A site. KNTZ, good for an opening. Beyond, start this one out well, but the trades are there. Lucid Dream getting access. Olivia with the off. What is that? Flick 789 is down. And out. Now, wrist is going to be sore later today. Yeah, person rotate in from CT spawn. It's going to be my rolls. You notice the numbers actually changed? It's creeping me out. It's normally on the right hand side of your screen, it's supposed to be six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And now it's one, two, three, four. Oh, my head. My head. And Olivia's got the sight line. They have one flash, one nade, one molly. They don't have any way of dislodging him unless they can catch him perfectly and this tiny crack is peeking with a flashbang. And they don't. He's gonna swap the cross. Should be a first kill. No, he misses the shot. Very uncharacteristic of Olivia, but I guess very characteristic of how the series has been going for him. Thinking back to the first play on it. He comes through, 10 seconds left. They're gonna have to get this bomb plant down eventually. They're gonna come around the corner to try to stop it. One for one trade, the bomb does get down. And now beyond esports, one round away here. I'm closing out this first map, but it looked like they were almost gonna lose it. Well, they came pretty close. It's not for lack of trying, Jason. I think we saw beyond give away a lot more rounds than they needed to. But now they've come into OT and they've looked like the team that we expected from the start. It's a great shot by Olivia and we said that when he pulled out the AWP T side that's when he could do some serious damage but vast majority it was uh it was just the AK form in regulation I think now OT's helping out because they don't have to have those warm-up rounds to come straight in and pound for bound in buy rounds where they've got everything they want to work with I and mean, beyond do take the trophy quite a lot seven eight nine look at that aggression straight up connector pure confidence it's paid off They've got the A side. I mean, there's only Olivia to deal with it. He's stuck in CT, mollied off at this point. He's being flanked out as well. They don't know he's there. Oh, man. Olivia should fall. They're just waiting for him to flank around and clear this out. There you go. A side's taken. A side's open. You almost look to save here. We lost three people. I mean, you're obviously going to be looking for a peek. GTC, he's low. STK. He's on the flank. He's on his own lurk of, him, of his own. They go through Palace here, but they've lost out on QQ. They can't afford to lose many players. They need to just buy time. There's utility left for the CT side. You see Merrill's as a flash. I'm imagining that's going to make its way forward just as STK comes around that corner. But 20 seconds left. They've got to make a move. They've got to go fast. Flank is on its way here from the T side. 789 in through Kitchen. They obviously think it's going to be a save, but no, the CTs are still here. Merrill's needs to go forward fast. He can cover off CT as SDK goes for the defuse. No, Five no, seconds. They've just no. about got time. Merrill's trying to block the bomb, but oh, he stops it as well. PTC goes down before he can fire. Still blinded. And what a round for Beyond. Lose it.